Hey guys, um, today we're going to look at another pastoral poem. This one's actually written by Sir Walter Raleigh and it's called The Nymph's Reply to the Shepherd. So just in looking at the title, um, this tells us that it is a response to Christopher Marlowe's poem. So I assume that, you know, when Sir Walter Raleigh had read Marlowe's poem, he kind of thought, well, if the woman had a voice, what would she tell him? And this was his, like, what he assumed she would say back to the guy after hearing all of these things that he promises her. Uh, if you hold this poem up right next to the other one that we studied, you will see that while it, Raleigh <laughs> decided to um, mimic the same structure that Marlowe did, I think that's done very intentionally. Um, and he does kind of dissect uh, Marlowe's poem quatrain by quatrain. Okay? Uh, he breaks down all of the things that Marlowe says and responds to them. Okay, so anyway, um, maybe make a note there that this these are divided up into quatrains. Again, same amount of quatrains as the prior poem. Um, let's read it, shall we? So it says, If all the world and love were young, and truth in every shepherd's tongue, these pl pretty pleasures might me move to live with you and be your love. Time drives the flocks from field to the fold, so fold meaning a pen, and rivers rage and rocks grow cold. And Philomel, which is means nightingale, and Philomel becometh dumb, means it can't, they're not singing anymore. The rest complains of cares to come. Flowers do fade, and wanton fields, meaning luxurious fields, to wayward winter reckoning yields. A honey tongue, a heart of gall, is fancy spring, but his sorrows fall. Thy gowns, thy shoes, thy beds of roses, thy caps, thy curl, and thy posies soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, in folly ripe, in reason rotten. Thy belt of straw and ivy buds, thy coral clasps and amber studs, all these in me by no means can move to come with you and be your love. But could youth last and love still breed had joys no date or age no need, then these delights my mind might move to live with you and be your love. Okay, obviously I um, changed some words there just for effect, I think, maybe just to, you know, help you guys understand a little bit. But, uh, so again, structurally we go with first, so quatrains it's divided up into, let's do rhyme scheme really fast. I don't think it'll take us very long because it's very similar to Marlowe's. So, uh, the first part says young and tongue, so we put two A's there. Move and love would be two B's. Okay. Right there. We see that in the second quatrain it says fold and cold. Doesn't rhyme with anything else, so C's. Dumb and come, we have double D here. We've got fields and yields. Nothing rhymes prior to that, so two E's, double E. Um, and then we have gall and fall, F, F. So I'll show you what I've done so far just to kind of make sure that you got the same on your own paper or your own document online if you're doing this there. Um, so next quatrain says roses and posies. We've got um, G, H, Oops, sorry, roses and posies are the same, so double G, and then forgotten and rotten would be H's. Hopefully that didn't mess you up here. I got a little ahead of myself. Um, and then we've got buds and studs, two I's. Move and love. So remember, don't get into a hurry because sometimes lines are repeated. In this case, they mimic um, what we saw in the first quatrain with the last two lines, so move and love. So these would be B's. It's not exactly like Marlowe's because those would have been A's on that paper. Um, so we put B's there. So breed and need does not rhyme with anything else. So two J's. And then finally, again, don't get in a hurry because we do have some repetition again. We've got move and love. So B's are written here. Okay. So this one, this is what it should look like overall. Okay. Finished product of the uh, pastoral poem. Okay, so I forgot to write down quatrain on one of them, so let me do that. Let's go into what it's actually saying. So, anyway, 
the first one said, let me reread this to you. It says, if all the world and love were young and truth in every t uh, shepherd's tongue, these pretty pleasures might me move to live with you and be your love. So the biggest word that I notice here, and it's the very first word of the poem, says, if. Okay. So what does that say about this speaker? Um, it says that the woman, this is who we're, you know, we, we know as the speaker of the poem, is saying that she doesn't believe that these things actually happen. Okay, so it tells us that this woman has a little bit more of a realistic uh, view on the country, probably is very well aware of what the country is like, and uh, has to tell him that. Like, look, man, uh, what you're telling me, it's not really real, okay? So anyway, if that were possible, if the world and love could always be young, if we could re remain forever young, if every shepherd um, told the truth, then I might be willing to come there and live with you and be your girlfriend, okay? So if everyone told the truth, if this were an ideal situation, then yeah, I'll do it, okay? Um, might want to jot that down yours. I'm not going to write that down just because the last one, last video took kind of a while for me to do all that. I'll show you a finished copy when I, when I get there uh, at the end of the poem. So anyway, let's move forward to the next one. So it says, time drives the flocks from field to fold when rivers rage and rocks grow cold and Philomel becometh dumb, the rest complains of cares to come. So um, the biggest issue that she has is that when time passes, everything changes. Nothing stays the same. We're constantly in a, in a state of change. It's the one thing we can count on is that time will pass, things will change. Um, look at, I don't know if you have the other poem next to you or pulled up on your computer, but the second quatrain of Marlowe's poem talks about these very things. So she again dissects his, uh, his poem quatrain by quatrain. So while Marlowe says, we'll sit upon the rocks and watch the shepherds feed their animals and sit next to the rivers and listen to birds sing, she says, time will make the shepherds bring their, flo uh, their flocks in to the pens because it does get cold and they'd want to keep them alive um, and care for them. So time, they won't even be out in the pasture anymore. They won't be out in the valleys anymore. Um, at some point, rivers are going to rage because things get colder. Rocks grow cold, so yeah, it's not going to be pleasant to sit on the rocks at some point. It's not always going to be nice and warm outside. Um, birds aren't always going to be singing. I mean, think about, you know, where we even live. You know, the birds aren't there all year round. They, they migrate, so, you know, you don't hear them all the time. And she points that out. So again, this is very realistic. She understands, uh, you know, not everything is, that glitters is gold or stays gold. Okay, looking on to the next quatrain, it says, uh, the flowers do fade in luxurious fields to wayward winter reckoning yields. A honey tongue, a heart of gall, is fancy spring, but sorrows fall. So uh, again, looking back at Marlowe's poem, you know, these were the things that he tells her in the third quatrain, that he'll give her beds of roses, that he'll give her a thousand fragrant flowers and caps of flowers and dresses and whatever, okay? So she says, the nymph, the, the woman, says that flowers fade, you know? When, I mean, think back to any time you've gotten flowers or someone you know has gotten flowers. They don't ever, they don't always stay in perfect condition, you know? Time, they start to wither away, they start to kind of rot, um, and then you have to throw them out. So anyway, she points that out, flowers fade. Um, even the fields don't always uh, have crops in them, you know? Is, this is just going back to what we know in our own life. Um, you know, at some point the crops are harvested, the fields are bare, and we don't have green um, crops sitting there all year round, okay? Um, anyway, she also points out that, you know, the man kind of has a honey tongue, which means that he set, the things that he says are very sweet um, and also not 100% true. And she says, yes, that's something that is enjoyable, but, you know, it doesn't, uh, it's, it's, it's not something that's believable. Okay, anyway, I know I repeated myself there. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so nothing lasts forever. That's what she got, gets at in that quatrain. So moving forward, thy gowns, thy shoes, thy beds of roses, thy cap, thy kirtle, and beds of posies. Uh, soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, and folly ripe and reason rotten. 
All right, so again, breaking down what Marlowe said in that fourth quatrain, you know, Marlowe promised the gowns of the best wool and the coming from the best lambs and all these slippers and buckles. She points out that in, in this quatrain that all of these items um, either will break, they will fade out, they'll wither away, uh, they or someone will eventually lose interest in them. Okay, I mean, think back to the clothes that we, we get on a yearly basis. You know, over time, our, our clothes do fade and they don't look as good as they used to. Or we wear them to the point where maybe they're worn thin or there are some holes that gather in them. Um, or we get tired of them and we go and donate them somewhere or give them to somebody else and we go buy new ones. Okay, you know, we, we want the newest and the most current thing. So um, so this is not enough for her to hold her, to hold her attention and go, you know, make this huge lifestyle change and go live with them. Okay, so again, very, very realistic. All right, gotta give that to her. Okay, it says uh, fourth quad, or sorry, this is the fifth quatrain. Thy bell of straw and ivy buds, thy coral clasps and amber studs, all these in me, no means can move to live with you and be your love. So I think that really what she's trying to tell us here in this quatrain, you know, some of these other things that could last a while, I think she's trying to say to him, look, man, I'm not a materialistic person, that these aren't the only things that would make me come and live with you, that I need more than just gifts. So um, I think that's really all that she's saying there. She just lists off the other, other things and just and tells him that, okay? Final quatrain. It says, but could youth last and love still breed, had joys no date or age no need? Uh, then these delights my mind might move to live with you and be your love. Okay, so again, if these things could happen, if we could stay forever young, if we could always have this sort of fresh um, love, then, you know, if, if we could always maybe you know, if joy was stayed around forever, because we know that in real life, um, we, we're not always happy that we do go through periods of, of sadness or, you know, frustration and things like that. So she's just saying that, you know, that's just not, just not the way that life works. So if, but if that could happen, then yeah, I would be tempted. Uh, but no, I'm not, I'm not gonna live with you. So anyway, um, that's what her response to the, the shepherd would be. Okay, so just again, one thing I do, probably one of the biggest things I want you to take away from these poems is that Marlowe was the idealistic kind of pastoral poetry guy. He really fits in with that, um, that structure. Raleigh blows holes in that structure. It's almost like he's criticizing pastoral poetry, I would say. Okay, um, anyway, I really hope that this helps you guys out. You know, as always, email me with questions and I'll be sure to get back to you and tell you what you need to know. See you later.